Good Friday morning to my sports fans out there. Will Cotter the second once again as a sideliner, you know, all American bench warmer himself. Yeah, I'm proud of that. <laughs> but anyway, good Friday morning. I'm back at y'all with another, yet another video. Um, you know, it's been a good week so far. You know, it's a great week actually. Got the haircut. You know, back in the Saints room, my living room. So got Deuce McAllister. Can't see the name, but see the number. So clearly, I'm a Saints fan. But you know, that's neither here nor there. So I uh, wanted to get back. I know last week I was discussing uh, Terrell Owens about his, you know, him declining to go to the Hall of Fame induction. And as you guys know, I'm fully support his decision uh, based on his resume and his impact on the uh, pro game itself. And I want to hit you guys with a, yet another uh, football video. Th football video today. So I'm gonna just jump right into it. Uh, just a reminder: just uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to um, to get all all notifications on my videos that I upload. I'm trying to. I don't have a set schedule right now. I'm just going to tell you guys that the truth right now. I want to just uh, post. I just want to get the reps in. I just want to uh, get my trial run, trying to perfect the craft, hone my craft with video, videography, and just uh, trying to uh, become a better content creator for you guys. So, um, so as I'm as other day, as I'm just uh, casually minding my business um, at home, so just uh, cleaning up, just being productive, I'm trying to trying to be productive, cleaning up around the house. Uh, my best friend, uh, he sends me this tweet, and he said, Will, the Seahawks have lost it. And I said, the Seahawks have lost it. So I was thinking to myself, yeah, they lost the Super Bowl a couple years back at the goal line, but that was 2015. That's over three years ago, brother. You got you to gotta be more specific. So I, I, so I just, just to cure my curiosity, I just opened up Twitter, you know, just to see what he's talking about. And I've seen... Ryan Grigson has been has agreed to a term to go to go be at a consultant for the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> <sighs> Yesterday, actually, um, I was going with my uncle to uh, one of my uncles to uh, go to the gym and just hoop and uh, get on the exercise bikes. But before that, I was really considering. Picking out my coffin because I was dead. <laughs> I was dead. I was really about to pick out the coffin. I was like, uh, he, my friend, he wiped me out with that one. But um, you know, and uh, just a disclaimer, um, you know, he's he's a, it's funny because uh, the my friend who tweeted me, uh, he's a Colts fan, so um, you might you guys might think, oh, oh, he's a bitter Colts fan. He's a bit. I don't believe that to be true. He has every right. He's very educated, well knowledgeable about his favorite franchise. He he knows what he's talking about. I'm a, I'm gonna get right into it. So, as you can see, my title of the video, you you see, I agree with him. So um, so they so the Seattle Seahawks really signed on. They agreed to a turn with Ryan Grigson. Um, you know, going to, I'm I'm 24 years old, and um, I've always been taught, you know, the purpose of sports. I uh, obviously enjoy what you do. But it's to win. Last time I checked, so it's it's really interesting that you uh, sign on a guy who who's the epitome of ineptitude, or one of them at the general manager position. But that's just me. Uh, but I'll tell you why I feel like that. You know, this is a guy who um, obviously you know your football. He replaced Bill Polian, in Hall of Fame legendary executive for the Indianapolis Colts with a 14 year run of Peyton Manning. And you're, granted, you know he did have Peyton Manning. I understand, you know. He did have Peyton Manning drafted him number one overall in 1998. I get all that, but he did so much more than that just to get the number one decision, the number one decision in getting Peyton Manning. And even back then, when he made the decision, you know, a lot of people looked at Ryan Leaf as the the future of the franchise for anybody they pick one two. It was that neck and neck, so to speak. So Bill Polian, he he drafted Edron James. Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Robert Madison, Dwight Freeney. Uh, I can go on and on, honestly. Um, so, and, it, and you know, it, he's shown his, he showed his dominance through that 14-year run time and time again. As you can see, I'm really, I want to um, attack this Ryan Grigson situation in two, on two fronts, the Colts front and the Seahawks front. So, this just goes to show, this once again highlights uh, that Jim Irsay may be, like it's really making a compelling case for one of the ten worst owners in the history of sports. Now this is not granted he's not the main subject to topic of this right here, but 
when you think about uh, what the Colts accomplished in the 14-year run with, with Bill Polian, Bill, the firing of Bill Polian is really the demise, led to the demise of the Colts franchise, period. Well, when you looked at, like, the wins, uh, obviously I, n- I understand, like, a one a top three quarter, a Mount Rushmore quarterback helps the job, but he Peyton Manning did have his help. And to know Andrew Luck is not in the same stratosphere as Peyton Manning, when you have help, especially at the offensive line, you would understand that he uh, Peyton would be more successful than Andrew Luck, despite Andrew Luck's physical gifts. So, uh, Ryan Grigson takes over the GM job for the Colts in 2012. So, he made the best decision he made was to draft Andrew Luck number one overall. Um, so, obviously, kudos to him for that. That, that wasn't the, uh, a hard decision to make. And then the other one of the other greatest decisions he made was actually to draft T.Y. Hilton later in that draft. Since then, he had, he from his tenure up until 2017, never drafted another Pro Bowler. He did acquire some like Pro Bowl like veteran guys who became Pro Bowlers, but they were past their prime. So, and yes, Robert Mathis did have a 19 sack season or 19 and a half sack season in 2013. Had 12 combined the following three years. So you can't, as great as a Hall of Fame guy as he is, uh, you can't rely on him to have that type of success. So, which meaning as a GM, you have to find newer pieces to put into your team to for them to be successful. And he didn't do that during his tenure as a as a GM for the Indianapolis Colts, which is unfortunate because you have a guy Andrew Luck, who I think when healthy is one of the one like a top six quarterback in the sport, and wasting his prime away because. A guy's not doing his job. That's that's unfair, clearly. And one of the things, uh, and I call him Ryan Rickson because he rigged the franchise, he ruined the franchise. <laughs> he ruined the franchise. You might call me petty, but whatever. But anyway, I mean, he 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 was really a detriment to this team, year in and year out. So um, I want to I want to play you I want to play you guys a video. Hopefully, you can hear it. Uh, it's from Michael Wilbon back in 2016 when uh. Ryan Ryan Rickson had the audacity, the the gumption, the gall, the unmitigated gall, as Stephen A. Smith would say famously, that uh, he was, you know, Mike, Michael Wilbon was, uh, as you know, PTI, one of the PTI co-hosts in the ESPN popular show, of course. He was really critical of Ryan Rickson's uh, talking about Andrew Luck's contract was the reason why they were struggling to get pieces in, but <laughs> let, me, let me tell you. I'm gonna let him tell you. Actually, this page. Hopefully, you can hear it. But uh, is 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 going to get to where I'm going? Rickson comes off as a total fraud, <laughs> a complete and utter fraud. Because here's a guy. Let, let's just go west for a minute to John Listen. Elway, okay? Who had the biggest quarterback contract at the time at one point. With Mr. Peyton Manning, and how, how, is that defense? I'm sorry. Tell me how that Denver defense works. Mm. Good. So works this good. guy's job, Ryan Grigson, only wants to get in a fight with everybody. His job is to figure out how to juggle the finances and get a defense out there with a quarterback. And franchises figure this stuff out all the time. The Steelers, Carolina did it last to year. Him. Talk he to him. Do it. Fraud. Ryan F. Grigson. See, I know that was his middle name. The point is rather well taken, and I go back to the very recent history of the Baltimore Ravens, who when they won the Super Bowl, they get and they won the Super Bowl. Andrew Luck has it. They gave Joe Flacco a bunch of money, and as a result of that, they fell down and, and they didn't make the playoffs. In this particular case, though, I, I mean, you gave the guy the deal, and now you depend on Andrew Luck to be a great quarterback. If Andrew Luck reads this, he has to think he just got thrown under the bus. By the very guy who gave him this deal. Mm-hmm. Andrew Luck has to be steamed out of his Tony, skull at the moment. Tony, he also had him under a rookie contract. What was he doing with the money then? To build the defense. There are other people out there. Reggie Wayne thinks a problem with that team comes from the front office and not necessarily. This is worse than your boy who's a coach of the Buffalo Bills who says, I'll be the first guy out of here boy. if we lose He's and then fire boy. somebody else. Rex and I. <laughs> Michael Wilbon, he the true, he preaching, he preaching, but it goes back to my point. So, what? I, and I was snapping because he brought up a great point. Andrew Luck, he wasn't absolved of a rookie. He wasn't, he wasn't exempt from a rookie contract. So that means he wasn't get always getting this type of 
expensive money. So Wilbon asked us asked the question, what was he doing the money during his what was Grixon Rickson doing with the money during Lux rookie contract? Well, I'll tell you. I'm gonna look at the draft from I'm gonna give you some draft I draft notes from 2013 to 2015. One thing about you know you guys are gonna learn about me is that I, I think it's unfair to really judge players after one and two seasons. So I wanted to just to preface my comments, preface my next point with that, and just really throw out the disclaimer. So what I'm gonna do is give you the Indianapolis coach draft picks from 2013 to 2015. And I might post a picture of it for you. Actually, I'm actually I'm gonna just do that. Uh, I'm gonna just post a picture for you in the video, but So from 2013, 2014, 2015, the Colts had a combined total of 20 draft picks. To this day, only three of those draft picks are still in the Colts roster. Three. But of course, it's always it's always the quarterback, it's always the guy who's making the most money on the franchise. Of course, he would be the convenient scapegoat for the sake of Ryan Rickson. <laughs> you know, last time I checked, that's his job to manage the money. First of all, before man, before you manage the money, you got to pick the right players. So, but uh, three Pro Bowls, three Pro, like three players remain on the roster out of twenty. That's not even a what is that like a fifth, less than a fifth of the players. <laughs> but Andrew Luck is the problem. <laughs> You know, that was, you know, really just, a, um, I never was a, a the biggest fan of Ryan Grigson. Um, during his second year as a coach GM, he did sign Trent Richardson, um, and which I, at the time I was honestly shocked and ex somewhat excited about because he did have a pretty solid rookie season in Cleveland in 2012. So I thought that was a robbery that they pulled off, which was good news for the Colts at that time so I assumed but it it didn't be that it, it didn't turn out to be that way so and then it just spiraled downhill and when I look at when I look back at when you, when you look back at the legacy of Peyton Manning how, and despite how great and all time special he was he had the big he had the the tremendous blessing and benefit of having a Hall of Fame executive in Bill Polian when you were able to draft like all those players around him. And granted, even Peyton Manning's offensive line weren't really decorated during his time in, in Indianapolis. But at the very least, he had two guys. Um, he had he had two Pro Bowls, uh, Tariq Glenn as a left tackle, and of course, Jeff Saturday as a perennial Pro Bowl center. Two-time two -time first team All-Pro, I think if, I, if memory serves me correctly. Um, significantly better than anybody's, anybody Grigson put out on the field. Yes, I know Anthony Costanzo is Anthony Costanzo, excuse me, Costanzo is solid. I get that. Ryan Kelly is a solid center before he got hurt. But what really bugs me is the fact that going back to Jim Irsay, you hired an you hired an incompetent guy to to run your organization, and and this is the result. This is the product you get. As simple as that. You know. And I understand building draft pieces. You want to be patient, but if this if you're coming from a two and fourteen season, I can understand a team rebuilding and restarting. But two, January two thousand fifteen, and like they were just coming off the Colts were just coming off a AFC Championship game appearance against the New England Patriots. Yes, the oil they got blown out. Well, of course, but when you play against the greatest player in the history of the sport and the greatest coach in the history of the sport, that tends to happen, especially if they play in, at home in Foxborough, Massachusetts. That's a very difficult place to play. So anyway, you know, I, I could I could have some type of leeway, I would think. And but you were coming off a, a one you were one game shy of the Super Bowl. To me, if I'm the GM, I'm going all in. I don't care. If I have the money, especially if I have the finances, I'm going all in. And keep in mind, Andrew Luck didn't have that contract back then in 
two thousand at the end of the two thousand fourteen season. He was still on the rookie. He was just finished his third NFL season, still under a, a, a pretty friendly rookie contract. So, you know, you have to load up. So, in the in the following two off the two thousand fifteen off season, the Colts had an ch- opportunity to get Evan Mathis, a Pro Bowl offensive guard from Philadelphia. I think he ended up wouldn't going to Denver. I think, and then the following year, even bigger mistake. They had a chance to get Alex Mack, center in free agency, signs with the Falcons, get makes it all pro. They have an historic offense. They go to the Super Bowl. So you have the chance to get you had the chance to address it in free agency in the offseason, but he neglected to do that. Well, Grigson did at least, and Rock, Jim Irsay allowed him to. So, <laughs> man, 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 man. And you know it's funny going back to. Uh, what my friend was saying, my, my boy was saying about the Seahawks have lost it. You know, they signed a guy with this who's been the epitome of an aptitude, like I said earlier. Um, you know, you you just he's not getting that they just didn't get the job done. And you know, when you have when you have a quarterback in his prime, as talented as he is, uh, you have to you have to capitalize on that. And he they did not do that. Excuse. me. You know, it's uh, and it, it is always comical that <laughs> I always laugh at it because uh, this is the arrogance that he went about during his tenure um, with the Colts. You know, getting in, getting in heated discussions with personnel members. Uh, who gives you? Who, who, who has the nerve <laughs> with your track record? You have the nerve to to get in somebody's face. You have the nerve to question Andrew Luck, <laughs> the decision to give him a contract when. When he's the reason why y'all still standing, I don't know. I don't know where Ryan Grigson was in 2011, but can anybody remind him what the Colts looked like when they had a quarterback injured in 2011? Peyton Manning missed the entire 2011 season, you know, with the neck surgeries and stuff. They went two and 14. So one of the one of the more successful franchises, especially in, since post 2000. They had their worst season, one of their worst seasons in franchise history, all because of injury. And it wasn't because of the ineptitude at the front office, because they had Bill Polian. It was because of quarterback injury. They struggled post Polian because of ineptitude at the front office. And Ryan Grigson was the spirit, one of the spirit, it, the spearhead of that. Now I want to go to the second fold as the Seattle. Um, I, you might as well throw the franchise away. <laughs> so if you want to hire somebody that will take the franchise down, that's just I know you're consulting. What do you, what are you consulting? You see, I, I I don't get the logic in hiring Ryan Ryan Rickson. You know, it's, it's it's funny because so let me get this straight. So you you hire you you bring on a guy who you bring a guy who has issues straightening the offensive line. To a franchise that currently has struggles, has struggles on the offensive line. So last time I checked, the broke can't fix the broken. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's hilarious. It's comical to me. Uh, it's, like I said, I have to pick out my coffin. I said, I, I'm laughing. I mean, it's not, it's not staged. It's like you may say, it's my laughing stage. I just, I'm just tick. I'm just joked out. That they would make this decision, um, man, man. See, I'll surely pull. They really, they're gonna butcher this one. I, I really, without a shadow of a doubt, I feel like they're gonna butcher this one. And um, that's pretty much my rant <laughs> for today. So, um, but I just wanted to share you guys my thoughts about this. Uh, I think this is a tremendous mistake. Uh, I think Ryan Grigson is is an awful, uh, like front office guy. I mean, I understand people. Deserve second chances, and that's true. But I'd rather have just one chance and get it right. That's just me. That's, that's neither here nor there. But I just want to thank you guys for tuning in once again to uh, my channel. Uh, once again, hit the uh, subscribe button, and hit especially hit the bell, so I can you know so you guys can get notifications for me every time I post. Like I said, I'm, just, I'm not really at a set schedule right now at this current point. I'm just posting, posting, posting. 
So I just thank you for bearing with me as I get my uh, rebrand my channel. So you guys have a blessed day and appreciate you tuning in. You guys take care.